on the desktop that you don't want deleted. When the computers reboot, everything on the C drive and the desktop gets reset. So if you make a brand new folder on the desktop and you call it wherever and you work on it for seven days straight and then you reboot the system, all of that stuff is gone, okay? So I definitely recommend don't saving anything to the desktop. If you go to your start menu and you go to documents or you hit command E, that's or uh, window E, that's the easiest hotkey to get to, um, it'll bring up a list of all of the different drives on the left, okay? Um, so the P drive is the one that you want to work on. So if you go down to your P drive, and I'm going to pretend that this desktop folder is my P drive, um, I need you to make a folder for your work, okay? So our folders are going to be called a specific name. So make a brand new folder and you can right click or you can go up to the top where it says file new folder, however you want to get to it. And you're going to make a new folder with your last name, underscore uh, 2200, underscore W17. Okay. Just like any other program you will ever use, you need to stay organized every step of the way. It's very easy to not be organized and to basically screw yourself into a hole in the ground because your stuff isn't where it needs to be. Um, have you ever had an InDesign class? Yes? InDesign, Illustrator, something. Um, in InDesign, if you work on your layout and then you try to go to a different computer and none of your pictures show up, has that ever happened to anyone? Okay. Same kind of thing. With After Effects, it'll do the same stuff. So if we stay organized, we don't have that problem. Okay. So as someone who is starting off in the industry and you want to get a leg up, make sure you're staying organized every step of the way. If your files are not where they should be, take a few minutes, organize them, put them into the right spots. All right. So Sarcona 2200W17. So I know whose folder it is, it's mine. I know what class it is, 2200. And I know the semester W17, winter of 17, okay? So at any point, if my folder gets lost, I can recover it or at least search for my name and, and pull it up. Um, I recommend before you leave each day that you take this folder and you drop it into your thumb drive. Or if you have something like Dropbox or you have Google Drive, drop it onto one of those um, so you at least have a backup somewhere. These computers are not protected. Um, someone in the class after you can click on your folder and hit delete and then everything is gone forever. Okay, That has happened before. People have wiped the entire um, P drive and just like gone. Everything's gone off of it. So you want to make sure that you have a backup of this. And like I talked about last class, if you have an external hard drive, you can actually work off of that. Everything I demo though, I demo off of the P drive um, just so you can see like a, a common area. All right. So inside your 2200 folder, you can just double click it. And you're going to make a brand new folder. And you're going to use your last name underscore page transitions. Okay, so now we're starting to organize. We have our main folder. Inside this folder, we have a subfolder that has our page transitions project in it. Every project should be um, grouped into its own kind of thing. Okay, so now we're going to go into the page transitions folder and we're going to make several folders inside here. Um, some of these we are not going to use, but I want you just to have the folders there so you're used to creating these folders because typically when you create something more advanced than this little simple thing we're going to do, um, you will have all of these folders. Okay, so make one new folder and um, let me pull up my spreadsheet. I have I have a cheat sheet. So here is our folders that we want to have. So you're going to have one for artwork, one for audio, one for movies one for output and one for reference but do
exactly. So anything that we are using to help us out would go in the reference folder. So they're not, obviously, I didn't give you the answers right away. You kind of knew what they were. Their name kind of says it all. So if you download anything from the internet and you're like, I want to use this as either an inspiration for my colors or I want to use it for a uh, background or whatever it is, you drop it into reference. If it's a movie you're going to use in your actual project, you'll drop it into movies. If it's an audio clip, you'll put it in audio. If it's an artwork piece, you'll drop it into artwork. Okay. And then each one of these inside there could be organized as well. That piece we saw where the kids walking around and there's all those people and backgrounds inside each one of those uh, inside the artwork folder, you may have a folder for the main character, um, the the generic female in the background, the generic male in the background, the background pieces themselves, the different scene, uh, scenes that might be in there. Okay, so you might have several different folders inside of these things, but the idea is that we at least have a starting point of where to start organizing it. Okay, um, my. Uh, you should always think you can never be too organized on any assignment, okay? You want to make sure that you're over organizing rather than under organizing. So nothing I should save for this project should be outside of this folder. If I came in and I needed to back up a folder to make sure I have everything, I back up this one pay transitions folder or my one Sarcona folder here and everything I have or everything I need is right inside that folder, okay? So just remember that as you're working. Um, these little cheat sheets are being printed and then you'll get those um, uh, next class hopefully they'll be done. All right, so now we're going to go into After Effects. Now before you jump into After Effects, um, before you jump into any Adobe product, it's always good to revert back to a default state. You don't know who was working on it before you. So if you hold Control, Alt, and Shift as you open the product, it will show up. Um, when you go to the Windows key, you can type in After Effects, and it'll just pop up right there. And then you hold Control Alt Shift, and then you can click and hold on it. Now, what should happen is, as you're holding Control Alt Shift, as you've clicked on After Effects, it says, "Do you want to reset this to a default state?" And mine's obviously going to take about a year to open up. Yes, I want to delete my preferences, and then I will hit OK. Are you sure? Yes. Now what should happen is if you reboot the computers when you come in, they should automatically reset themselves. They don't always do that, okay? Uh, if you wanna rate the Adobe products, you definitely could do that also. All right, so um, there's a screen that pops up. It says something about, do you want to make a new document or open a document? You can typically always close that. Um, it'll typically never have your information right on that screen anyway, unless After Effects crashed or you closed it and then you could click on it, okay? So just to cover just a brief uh, overview of the interface, um, obviously this is gonna look a little bit different than Photoshop or Illustrator and the other stuff you've used. This area here on the left, this is where you bring stuff in, okay? It's your project window. So if you wanted to bring in any audio or artwork or movies or whatever, that's where you would import your stuff. That's also where you can kind of sort your stuff. Has anyone done video editing in here? Okay, video editing, this is very similar to like your bin inside of Avid or inside Premiere. So this is like the area you're importing stuff. Um, InDesign or Illustrator is kind of like the links palette, but actually useful, okay? Um, this area here is what is our viewport. So everything that we um, see, everything that we our project is looking like is going to happen right there. We do very little work actually inside of, well, not very little work. We do most of our work in another area, but secondary, that's where we're going to do a lot of work. Um, this area down here is our timeline. We currently don't have a timeline set up. There's no sequence in here. There's no information, so it's just blank, but we will see we will have a timeline inside there. Um, a bunch of palettes are over here on the right. Uh, we also have, obviously, the Windows stuff, and you could pull open more things and less things and whatever else, okay? So a whole bunch of different stuff inside there. Uh, up at the top, this is your main toolbar. So if you look at your hotkey sheet, uh, this is the main toolbar here um, on there. The hotkeys for this, obviously I can't go vertical because that would look weird. So V is the selection tool, which is this one. H is the hand tool. This is the zoom tool. You can also hover over it and see the hotkeys, which is very nice, okay? 
Um, and if you're on a Mac, uh, any control key is just command and any alt key is just option. That should be across the board for any hotkey. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a brand new document. So inside of After Effects, um, we need to create basically something to work on, okay? So if we were in Photoshop, we would just create a new document and there it would be. Same thing with Illustrator, same thing with InDesign. In After Effects, we create a composition, okay? So we're gonna go into the composition menu and go to new comp. What's the hotkey for new composition? Control, Control N. Control N, perfect, see? Not that hard. All right, so this brings up a window that has a lot of stuff on it that might seem scary. Um, resolution and size. So we have to deal with where our video is gonna be shown. Uh, we also have to deal with time limitations and constraints of what we're doing inside the classroom. So if you're doing something for like an IMAX, you would be dealing with like 8,000 pixels left and right and 8,000 pixels vertically. That doesn't sound like a lot, uh, but it actually is when you're talking about motion. So the default that I have on mine anyway is HDTV 1080 2997. Um, that's a great size. It'll show up beautifully on a home TV, um, but it's actually overkill for what we need for this class. So everything that we're going to do for this class is gonna be at 960 by 540, which is actually half of that. Now you probably won't find that resolution inside this list. So what we have to do is type it in. So if you go to the width and you just click on the blue number and you just type in 960, do not hit enter, just hit 960 and then hit tab. Okay, if you hit enter, it completes the window and then it's locked in, okay? So just type in 960 in that top box. What was that? 960 by 540, yep. Um, because we had that lock aspect ratio on, it automatically sized both of them for us, which is awesome. Um, if this is your home computer and you're constantly using this resolution, you could make your own preset by clicking the new preset button. That's cool too. Um, we're also gonna be working at a flat 30 frames per second. So where it says frame rate, we're gonna type in 30 right there. Okay, and again, don't hit enter, just type it in and then you can hit tab just to accept that. Then we have a couple other areas that we can look at. So one of them is the resolution. Um, as we work, you'll see that it gets really slow. Initially, our stuff's gonna go pretty quick. You're gonna hit the play button and it's gonna go zip super quick-ish. Um, eventually, we're gonna get to the point where it's like dog slow, where it just like drags. Like, you have to wait two seconds to see one frame of your animation, okay? So at that point, we'll lower our resolution, um, but this is something we can change after the fact. We don't need to worry about that now. Um, our start time code for typically everything we're gonna do is gonna be at zero. So you can leave all the start time code stuff at zero. Um, to show you what this is, you have here on the far right, that's your frames. Then this is seconds, minutes, and hours, okay? <laughs> so if I wanted something to be four minutes long, I could type in four, zero, zero for zero seconds, and then zero, zero for zero frames. And that would give me a four minute, uh, or a four minute start code. I don't want a four-minute start code. Um, the duration is the same thing. We have our frames, we have minutes, or seconds, minutes, and then hours. So the same thing, if I want a four-minute long animation, I type a four with enough zeros there, and I get a four-minute long animation. Um, that's actually, it doesn't sound like a lot, but in animation time, that's a whole lot of time. That video we watched was like a minute and a half, I think, um, and that was like a lot of work in that minute and a half. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, um, a six second animation. So you're gonna type in six, zero, zero. Okay. So six, zero, zero. Uh, now that should give us six seconds. If you look at the little preview thing right here, it should say six colon zero, zero. So you can zoom in on that with your eyeballs and see if that looks correct. All right, then the last thing we have is background color. The background color that we choose is basically just for visual purposes. When we render out our stuff, we can't render it um, to a movie with transparency, um, so we have to have something as a background color. Um, black is usually nice because it's just a flat color. If we had white, then we have this big bright light shining in our face. Um, but I like to go and pick something that's like a muted gray. So just like not terribly 
too dark or too bright, but just kind of like in the middle. So drag your thing over to the side and grab just like some sort of grayish color. Okay, so I just pick something that's just like a darker gray. It doesn't matter, we can change it later. It's not locked in. Okay, then you can hit okay. All right, so now we have something there. Now, if you look down in our timeline, we actually have a timeline now. Like before, these numbers didn't show up because they didn't know how long our footage was going to be. Um, we also have inside of our uh, project area, it says comp one. So now we actually have a composition here, and we have a timeline there, and those two things are linked. You could have compositions and compositions and compositions. You could put compositions together. Um, when they did that boy animation, most likely he was inside of one composition and then he was dropped into another composition that had like the background and the people and whatever else, okay? So think of each comp as a separate file and you could take these files and bring all these files together which makes things a lot easier. All right, so now we don't really have anything that we can do here yet because all we have is basically like a blank page. So we're gonna make a brand new layer. So I'm gonna go to layer <clears throat> new and solid and then you can see what the hotkey is for solid <clears throat> okay so this brings up another window now depending on what we're doing we may want a solid that's square rectangle tall or short or whatever typically for what we're gonna do initially we're just gonna stick to just a straight exactly the size so it automatically read our comp size is 960 by 540, so it automatically puts those numbers in there. I have to check every two minutes to make sure I'm recording still. Um, we're dealing with pixels too. Inches doesn't really matter. I'm not even sure why it's an option. I guess it is. Uh, we're dealing with square pixels. If these numbers were like crazy off like that, you can just click make comp size and it automatically registers what your comp is. Um, you'll see that the color that it chose is the exact color of our background, okay? So if I put a gray solid on a gray background, it's going to look exactly the same. So click on that color and then pick something that is a nice color that will not blow your eyeballs out. So I like blues. Those are soothing colors. Okay. Once you've picked your color, it's at the comp size, then you can hit OK. All right, so stuff to notice on this. So now that we have a layer, a solid inside here, we actually have a piece of material down there. We have a source item, okay? And the source item is a solid and we can reuse the solid in multiple places. Um, we also have <clears throat> a pinkish reddish bar right here. That's the length of it, okay? Because we're dealing with time, we could actually have this bar displayed to a certain point and then just stop it from displaying. We also have something up here, and you probably recognize the little dots in the corners, very similar to what you would see if you were inside of Illustrator or inside of InDesign or Photoshop or any of those other programs. Okay, so uh, we also have this little manipulator in the middle, which we'll get to in a second. Um, cool. So I want to move this thing. Um, I'm actually a little bit claustrophobic on my screen. I'm right at the border, like the top of this and the bottom of this are just too close for me. So I just want to zoom out a hair. So what keyframe should I use or what key should I use to zoom out? Z. Z. So you hold Z and then you click and drag. Oops, sorry. You click, there we go, to get it to zoom out. Uh, you have to hold Alt if you want to go minus, and then just regular Z to zoom in. And then if you want to move it, you can hold down what keyframe? H. H, right? So we can hit H and zoom in. Okay, so I like to be a little bit backed off on this because it's a little bit, I don't know, it's just my own mind. I just, I don't like it right at the border. It just bothers me. Okay, so now I can see everything. Um, and I think this probably stems from I used to work like this, and then I'm cutting off the top of it and the side of it. So when you're done, you look at it and you have this border of crap that you haven't been paying attention to. Uh, the other way to zoom in and out that I typically use is my mouse. 
So if you use a scroll wheel up and down, that's how I typically will zoom in. You can also use this little guy here, which is just type in a number, right? So 50%, 75%, you've used those before. Or you can just say fit and it'll fit, which I don't like. There we go. Um, cool. So now that we're zoomed out a little bit. Yes, sir. If you have this clicked off, like if I've clicked off of this, you won't get those. If you click back on it, you will get those. Was that the issue? All right. So notice at the top right here, it says comp one. So we are currently working inside of composition one. Now I want you to double click on your solid down here in the timeline. Okay, so double click right on that solid. What changed? The top changed, right? So it doesn't say comp one here anymore. It actually opened up a brand new tab and that tab says layer one. Now this is basically like we're editing that specific layer. We're not looking at the entire composition. So if I had a uh, full blown animation, I actually double click a layer. It's only going to show me that one layer. So we have to be very careful because it's very, um, it happens a lot and then people freak out because like what happened? All right, all we have to do is click the little X, just like when people come by our computer and we don't want them to see our Facebook page. Okay, so you don't wanna be here because this isn't where we can edit stuff or um, animate stuff. We wanna close this tab so we're back to this area. So we're back to where this says just composition comp one. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we wanna animate this thing um, basically just coming onto the screen. Now what we could do is that we, um, thinking about how things animate, I could move this thing off the screen and set a keyframe and then move it back on screen and set a keyframe. But I'm basically moving it away from where I want it to be first and then moving it back, which doesn't really make sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to um, one second here. You see in the timeline that says one colon zero zero F? That means that that is one second. So I'm gonna scoot this little blue marker over to one second doesn't have to be right on one second, but close enough. And what I want to do is I want to set a keyframe for this one. Um, you guys have to click your tab to close the layer. Up here at the top. Right there. Cool. Okay. So we've moved our timeline to one second. And what I want to do is I want to say at one second, I want this solid to be exactly where it is. Like right where you are right now, I want you to be there. Okay. So if I'm going to edit something, would I edit something like position, scale, opacity, um, anchor point? What do you think I would edit? Position. Okay. So if you look at your hotkey sheet where it says layers, there are some hotkeys right here. Um, one of them is position. So what keyframe is or hotkey is position? P. P. So all we have to do is make sure we're clicked on this layer and then we hit P. And you'll see what it does. It opens up our position. Yes, ma'am. All right. So we're at one second. We've hit P. And what this does is it opens up the position settings. Okay. So right now we can see what is the X position and the Y position. X is going to go left and right and then Y is gonna go up and down. So this shows us exactly where this item is. Now it's not zero and zero, like you might think like, oh, I didn't move it, why is it at 480 and 270, okay? But remember our initial comp is 960 and the height is 540, those are the two dimensions that we set our composition to. Well, 480 is half of 960 and 270 is half of 540, and that guy right there is the center of our stuff. So he is centered right at that midpoint, okay? So that's why he's there. So I'm going to click on this little stopwatch. The stopwatch on the left of position says this, I want to set keyframes on this item, okay? So click on the stopwatch. You should get a little diamond that shows up right where your blue ticker is. There should be a little blue diamond right there. And then if you look on the far left here, there should be a blue diamond right there also lit up. Okay, that indicates that you have a keyframe at that specific spot. If you move your ticker now away from one and bring it back to zero, 
The diamond on the left is hollow. Okay, and we don't have a diamond anywhere else. So what I want to do now is I want to slide this solid off of the screen. Okay, now watch what I do because this is going to be the wrong way to do it. I'm just going to click this and just drag this off. And you can see how this doesn't go straight, right? Like if I drag it here, it's going to go at an angle. If I drag it there, it's going to like come in weird. Okay, so I want to drag this perfectly straight. So what tool could I use or what method could I use to drag something perfectly straight? Exactly. So just hold shift and we want to drag it like straight off. And again, leave a little bit of room so it's not like right on the edge. Okay. Something to note, every time we set a keyframe, we'll get a new diamond. Okay. Once we uh, click the stopwatch, all that does is say, I want to set keyframes on this layer. So anything we do to that layer will automatically set keyframes wherever we're at. So if I just, you're not going to do this part. If I go here and I do that, it makes a new diamond here, a brand new keyframe, and it sets the diamond there. If I go here and I move it over there, it sets a new one. If I go here and move it there, it sets a brand new one, okay? We only click the stopwatch once to say, I'm setting keyframes. Every time after that, it just automatically sets a keyframe. So we don't have to worry about doing that. Now, if I click and drag with this, you can see this is like a really funky animation. If I want to get rid of my keyframes, I can go to any one of these. There we go. And I can click the diamond off, or I can just click right on the keyframe itself and just hit delete. Okay. So now we want to see what this is going to look like when like it actually moves. Okay. Um, so if we hit the space bar, that will play our animation. So tap the space bar. Boop. Why am I the only one that made a sound effect? <laughs> I did not watch Shark Tank. <laughs> That's a good show. Um, so our animation, this thing just like comes out and then it basically stays out for the entire time, right? Because there's nothing else that happens to it. Um, so that's our animation so far. And it's pretty boring animation, but we'll spice it up a little bit later. Um, so what we want to do now is I want to have more of these, okay? So like the initial page transition is they have basically like one animation, but then they duplicate it over and over again, and then they offset it, okay? That's what makes it look so cool. So what we're gonna do is click on this medium solid, and we're gonna hit the P key to hide our position, because we're done with it for now. And we're gonna duplicate this. Um, I think I had it on here, but didn't have it on there. You can write it down yourself. Uh, to duplicate something, you can just hit Control D. Okay, so duplicate this thing so you have five different layers. Okay, five different solids. Now, if we were to hit Play, what do you think would happen? It would just repeat the animation. Right, repeat the animation for all five, making it look exactly the same. Right, because everything is exactly the same color. Everything is in the exact same spot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move each one of these layers. Now we have to move them in a, in a certain order. These layers here, um, they do um, obey a layer stack, right? So anything that's on top is actually on top. Anything that's on the bottom is on the bottom. So if I offset these two, three, four, and five, and I move these layers down, I'm not even gonna see it because layer one comes in and overwrites everything. It's like on top of everything. So I wanna go to layer four and I want to scoot layer four over, okay? So all I do is I click and drag on the number four's red bar and just drag it over a couple clicks, okay? You'll feel or see the bar just scoot over a couple clicks, okay? And it's not rocket surgery, you just move it over. Rocket surgery. <laughs> there we go, someone got it. Okay, so all I've done is just offset each one of these layers just a little bit, and it's more of like a step. I'm gonna really exaggerate mine so you can see it. There we go. It looks like the same animation, why? It's all the same color, right? It's all the same color, right? So now we have to change the color of each one of these items. So if I go to number four here, 
no, we have to go somewhere else. Um, I have to go to number four, but I also have to be able to see it. If I go way, way down here, I'm not gonna be able to see number four because number four is already being covered by number one. So I'm gonna bring this little ticker back to like this area between um, four being shown and three being shown. And I'm gonna go up to layer and say solid settings. And there's another hotkey for you, um, control shift Y. And then all we do is pick a different color. And then you can go to layer three, control shift Y, pick a different color. Control shift Y, just click on the layer and then hit control shift Y. It does not matter for this one. Then when you hit play, then you can watch that animation go through. Um, see how you have that red bar on the top? Yeah. You have your layer tab open again. Oh. There you go. All right, so this is where we are at, and this is, it's pretty ugly, number one. My color choices are fantastic, though, um, <laughs> but everything else is pretty ugly. It's very boring, it's very just like, yep, there it is. It doesn't feel like a transition, it feels like it's gonna slow down the pace of my animation, okay? Cool. All right, so uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make these things a little bit more exciting. Uh, I'm gonna jump over to, so he has obviously 12 videos that cover each one of the principles. And as we go through the class, we're gonna kind of hit on these as we um, uh, see fit. So this one, slow in and slow out. Right now, everything is moving at a constant speed. If I hit the play key again, you'll see that everything moves in just one constant speed and it's very just boring, right? Um, you'll also notice that my animation is not staying around for another four or five seconds. Um, it's looping pretty much right after the other part is done. If you look here, I have this bar, this bar here, this bar here, that defines my work area. The work area is basically what is going to play when we hit the play button. So that way, we, if we have a two minute long animation, we only want to see <clears throat> just this little area, we can define our work area. So another hotkey, if you look at your list is, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Under timeline, it says set beginning of work area and set the end of the work area. Okay, so B and N, really handy right next to each other on the keyboard, are ways that we can set our end of our work area. So if you were to move your uh, time slider to where you want it to end and you hit N, it'll just automatically move that end of your time slider. Okay, so now when you hit play, it's only going to loop to that point. Very handy. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to add a slow in and slow out to these things or a slow in only or a slow out only. Depending on what you're doing, certain things may uh, require different slows at certain spots. Now we could do that to each one of these individually, but why do that to each one individually? Because it'll actually take us longer to do it to each one individually as opposed to just doing it to one and then reduplicating and recolorizing them, okay? So we're gonna delete all the ones that have been moved. So all of the four through one, just delete those. Okay? So you only have one left and it's the one that's all the way on the left of your time slider. Okay, so you only have one layer left. <clears throat> we're gonna tweak this layer and fix its motion so that this layer's motion is perfect the way we want it. Another thing to pay attention to are the little dots that are here. All of these little dots are different frames. So this is a good indicator too to say, you know, how evenly spaced or how um, uh, linear is this motion. And you can see all these dots are pretty evenly spaced, meaning that it's not gonna have any speeding up or slowing down. It's just gonna be one constant uh, speed, okay? So uh, we're gonna go to our hit P again on that thing to bring back your position. And then remember that these are little diamonds right here where our keyframes are. If we change those from diamonds, which is a linear indicator, to something else, it will change how the animation is happening. So what I want you to do is I want you to marquee the two diamonds. And you can click one, shift click the other if you want. 
Uh, marking obviously is the easiest way to do it. Um, and then you can hit F9 on your keyboard. I'm recording my stuff so I can't hit F9, so I have to right click on a keyframe and then go to Easy Ease, which is that keyframe, okay? So then we should see that our keyframes turned into um, little triangles on top of each other. Hourglass. Hourglass, that's better. An hourglass. Um, so these hourglass things are indicators that this is easy ease. So now if we looked at the dots on here, you'll see that these dots look a bit closer than do the ones in the middle and the same thing at the end. So what this does is it evenly spaces or it um, pushes a little bit more movement at the beginning or at the middle and that's slower at the beginning and slower at the end. So now if we hit play, you'll see that we get a little bit different motion on this. Okay, it's subtle, all right? Now we want this to be a little bit more abrupt. We want it to be like really obvious of what's happening. It's still kind of boring in how it's doing it. Now we can do two things with an animation. We can tweak the curve, meaning tweak how it's easing in and easing out, or we can tweak the keyframes, okay? So right now this animation is taking one second. If I want this to happen faster, I can just click this keyframe and pull it back to, let's say, 15 frames. Okay? And by doing that, it'll speed the whole thing up. Okay? Because now it's taking less frames to do the entire thing. So I want you to click off of your keyframes and then drag one of them, the far right one, to about 15. Okay? <laughs> So that should speed up your animation. So when you hit play, you should definitely see that thing kind of like flying into the screen as opposed to before, it was kind of like gradually getting there. Okay, now it's still kind of boring. <clears throat> um, it still looks pretty linear. We don't have enough of this um, easing in and easing out to really um, see a difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this button here. This button is the graph editor. So click on the graph editor, and then you'll be amazed at what you see. <laughs> okay? So the graph editor shows in a um, very annoying fashion because as artists, I'm sure we didn't like math class and we probably don't like graphs especially. Um, but this is something we definitely don't want to have to look at. Now there is easier ways to represent that. So we clicked on this little graph here we're going to right click in here and show the speed graph. Okay, the speed graph is actually easier to manipulate for beginners than the value graph is. Okay, so every time we go to this, we're gonna click on that graph, we're gonna right click, make sure it's the speed graph. And then down here at the bottom of your speed graph, you'll see that there's a fit all graphs to view. Okay, it's kind of bunched up on the left, so if we just fit all graphs to view, we'll be able to see that a bit better. Tricky to understand. So what we want to do is it's pretty evenly spaced. So what we want to do is we want to take this and I'm going to click on one of these points. Okay, so click on like your left point and you'll see that you get handlebars. Okay, I want to click and drag um, the handlebar all the way to the right. As far right as it'll go. Don't drag it up or down because that'll move it. Try to keep it straight on that zero line and drag it all the way to the right. At some point it'll just stop moving and it won't let you go any further. Okay, so you click on the keyframe, then you grab the handlebar and drag the handlebar to the right. Then the right handlebar, you're gonna grab that and drag that all the way to the right. Okay, so your graph should look something like this when you're done. we should get something like this, where it kind of like slowly comes in and then like slams against the wall, okay? So what that speed graph shows, let me just play this, um, is very little movement. See down here how low the graph is? That means there's very little movement. It's not until we get to this point that there's a big jump in movement to get to the end of the, um, the animation. So, um, now we can take that animation and we can tweak that even further if we wanted to. It's like that is, let me just reset my work area real quick so I don't 
loop too much. There we go. Okay, so this is going fast right at the end. So it goes super slow and then boom, super fast at the end. If I switch those handlebars and I pull this one to the left and I pull the other one to the left, what do you think will happen now? Right, should go super fast and then slow down. Okay, now for something like this, that actually looks a lot better than the other one. The other one had the um, box kind of coming out a little bit and then jumping. This one goes super fast and then it gradually slows down. So I want you to go back into your graph editor and then switch the handlebars so that they go to the other side now. All right, so now we have this much better looking animation, okay? So now what will be the next step after this to make our transition? Duplicate it, right? So we duplicate it, we offset it, and then we change the colors again. So watch mine so you can see it. So I'm gonna hit P to hide the position. I'm gonna duplicate. I'm going to control D. Scoot them over until we get the little stair steps and then change each color. And remember, you can use Control-Shift-Y as your quick key to get to that changing color. Right. Also keep an eye on the spacing of your layers. <clears throat> Depending on how far you're zoomed in or zoomed out, that spacing could look completely different. So right now I'm zoomed out all the way on my timeline. Using this little guy at the bottom, you can zoom into your timeline and zoom out of your timeline. Okay, And this will change if you go in the graph editor and you click these buttons, it actually does zoom you in. So when you come back, it's like really zoomed in. So when you hit the play button, that's the ultimate visual representation of what we're seeing. This is way too slow for a transition. There you go. Let's see a little better. Okay, that's like way too slow for a transition. So I want to make sure that I've bunched my layers closer together so that I get a much smoother, uh, more appealing transition. So you can see how close I'm squeezing these guys together. Okay, so now that's more of a transition where I'm going from one piece to another piece, one color to another color. You ever seen the, I think it's the Chrome logo where they have all the colors kind of floating around in there? Imagine how boring that would be if one color loaded and then another color loaded and then another, another color loaded. It'd be pretty really boring to even look at. Okay, so this is much more exciting. That's actually maybe a little bit too exciting. So now this is where we can um, even add one more thing on top of this to make it feel a little bit more exciting or feel a little bit smoother than what it's doing, okay? So if you've uh, watched movies and you've ever seen like a freeze frame of a movie, typically there's a lot of stuff that's like really blurry, okay? There's a thing called motion blur that happens when you videotape stuff uh, because we're not like crystal clear on our camera, so there is some sort of blurriness. Here, this is perfect. Like, at any point in this, I can stop it and see, no matter how fast it goes, it's going to be crystal clear. So I'm going to turn on motion blur. It's a two-step process. Um, one of them is right here. This enables motion blur to be on my screen. Now, and I have to tell After Effects, I want these specific layers to have motion blur. And that's where this little thing, see how the icon's like the same icon? I just click and drag straight down, and now motion blur is on for all of those. So now when I hit play, I get a nice little fuzzy animation. So 
So hit Control S, <clears throat> go to your P drive, go to your 2200 folder, go to your page transition folder, and I save my projects right to this main area. Okay, that way I know exactly this project is for this piece of work. Okay, so I label it. I'll open up my cheat sheet again. <clears throat> I label it your last name <clears throat> underscore project name, which is page transition underscore zero zero, whatever the iteration is. So in this case, it'll be page transition transition underscore zero zero one. Okay. Now it helps to save stuff in iterations, meaning that you don't save everything as the same name every single time you work. If that one file gets corrupt, which happens often, um, not terribly often, but enough that it's annoying, um, you don't want to lose your stuff. So save in iterations. Every day you come in, save as 02 or 03 or 04. That way you have multiple backups to go back to. It's easier to lose three hours of work than three days of work, okay? Cool. Uh, that's that. Awesome. So now we have this, our page transition. Now to show you that this process can be used in other areas too, like the ones we watched were not as boring as this one is. Okay. So there's other stuff we can do. Um, looking at our sheet here, you'll see that there is a position that we could pull up to animate stuff. And there's also scale that we could use to animate stuff. So what I want you to do is I want you to get out your notepad and you're going to take notes as to the steps we used um, to create one. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So I'm going to make a brand new file here. Okay. So the first thing we did was new composition. Okay. And then what size was our new comp? 960 by 540, how many frames per second? And how long was our duration? Six seconds. Now you'll see too that six seconds was a bit of an overkill. Uh, we didn't actually need six full seconds, but it's better to have a little bit more room than not enough room. So it's always good to go on the other side. Uh, we also changed the background color, not necessary because um, uh, we could change it later if we need to, um, but I did change the background color. Is that? Yep. Okay, so now we have a composition. Then what was the next step that we did? Yep, so we have to make a layer new solid. So for this, I would just write down new solid. And that's even on your handout, there's a hot key on here, create new solid, control Y. So you don't even have to go up to that menu, you can just hit new solid. <clears throat> um, we picked a basic color for it, right? So whatever color we want to start off with. Um, this time I'll use, let's say orange. And then we made sure it was the comp size. That's all defaulted. And then we hit okay. All right, so now we have a composition, we have a solid. Now we need to animate it. So to animate this, what was the first thing we did? position right so we hit P to open up position and then we went to one second okay now when you're laying this stuff out one second is an arbitrary number because realistically now we know that 15 frames in this case was actually a better number right like we looked at one second and we're like that's way too slow for this animation so when you when you write that note of, of one second it's go to the time where you want it to end or go to the time where you want your animation. Think about a drawing, right? So at this point, I want a dog and at this point, I want a cat. So you put the dog at zero, you put the cat at 15 frames or one second or whatever it is. That's what you should be kind of visualizing when you're setting keyframes and animations. So we go to our end frame and then how do I tell this that I want to set keyframes? A stopwatch. So we click on the stopwatch and that gives us a diamond. Okay. Now how do I tell it to scoot off of the frame? 
What was that? Change the position. So I just do that right here. Clicked on zero, there we go. So before I set my next keyframe, I have to move my time slider. Otherwise it overwrites that keyframe. So I have to go back to zero and then move it over holding shift. Okay, then we can hit play and then we see that boring animation. All right, super boring. All right, so then what do we do to make this better? Not yet. I, we did duplicate when I showed the thing, but we can skip the duplicating and then seeing how horrible it is together. The speed graph? Yes. Okay. So I, we need to go to the speed graph, right? So if I click on the speed graph, you'll see that my speed graph looks pretty ugly right now. It's like a straight line. Remember we had the big arc in there? We don't have the arc right now because I skipped a step. I didn't do something. Ease in and ease out, right? So I have to grab both of these keyframes and then either F9 it, yep, or right click, keyframe velocity or assistant, and then easy ease. Okay, and then for, again, for some of these things you don't need to write, grab the keyframes, do this, do that. Put easy ease the keyframes. You'll understand what it is eventually after you've done it a few times, okay? Um, then we can go to the speed graph, and then we can tweak these. So we're going to grab the handles, and we're going to tweak the handles. Now, I'm saying tweak the handles because just like the last one, we tried one way and it didn't look very good, then we tried a different way and that one did look good. So as you start practicing and playing with the stuff, don't think that every time you're going to do the exact same thing. Go in there and take a look and see what looks good. So for this one, instead of dragging everything to the left and every, or everything to the right, I drug each one kind of outward, okay? So basically all my speed should be right here and right there. I just wanna see what that looks like. That's pretty boring. That's like incredibly boring. I'm gonna move this keyframe back to 15, even though the guys didn't tell me to do that. All right, that's all right. But I think we do definitely wanna have that go one way or the other. So we're going to go this way to the left, because I like the way it looked at the left. Cool. Okay, so now we've um, easy eased, we've tweaked our speed graph, right? Um, when you come in next time, remember the speed graph won't be here because the preferences will be changed. So you have to right click and you have to change this to the speed graph not the value graph. The value graph looks completely different than the speed graph. All right, so now I have a nice animation. I have one layer that looks awesome, and I want to now have more layers that look awesome. So how do I do that? Yes, P to hide my position, and then Control D, Mac guy. Nothing would happen. It would just bother me. <laughs> yeah, um, you actually can, um, if I hit P again, you can copy positions. So if I decided that I wanted these position keyframes on different layers that I already had, I could paste those onto new ones too, okay? Uh, but we're done with it, so I like to just keep it clean. All right, so now we've done that. So now what do I do? What was that? Yep, Control Shift Y and I change each color. As you're picking colors, try not to go crazy with your color choices. Think about colors that look pleasant. Think about colors that work good together. Remember your design one class where they talked about the color wheel and how colors uh, are complementary or territory or any of that stuff? Think about that when you're picking colors, okay? For me, I try to look at this color that I picked here, this original one, and I'll maybe pick a couple this way or a couple that way or try to go basically in a straight line it just makes more sense. Um, or even going on here, I could just scoot this up a little bit as one color, then go to the next one and scoot that up a bit further. Then go to the next one and scoot that up a bit further. And what this does is it keeps um, some of the settings for the color already um, similar. So like my saturation and my brightness have not changed, only the hue. 
So already these colors are gonna be a better choice than randomly grabbing five different colors. All right, so now I have that, so I should be done. Stair step, Stair step yes. So now we need to offset each one of those. All right, there's one more thing we can do to kind of make this a bit nicer. What was that? Motion blur. Motion blur. So we'll put motion blur on too. Is that just saying that you want to see it and you can click the top one? Yes. So if I don't have that on, I won't see the motion blur in here. It'll just be something I could turn on or turn off depending on how fast my computer's going. Um, when you get to later projects, you'll see they're going to go super duper slow, especially if you turn motion blur on. All right, so that was it. That's all we really did in this, okay? Now, watch how quickly I can do that again. Um, I'll just save this one as number two. There we go. Okay, now instead of going to a brand new project every time, that's kind of like a waste because like I said before, we can have multiple compositions, just like you can have multiple pages in InDesign. So instead of going to a brand new comp, I'm going to right click on this comp and rename it first page transition and then I'm gonna go up to my composition and make another brand new composition okay and it labels right at the top so I can call this second and as I get more specific as to what I'm doing with it um, I can name them exactly what they're doing so here is me just making one of these really quick Done, right? That's how quickly eventually you'll get to, right? So that took me what, like 30 seconds? I don't know. Didn't, time it. Um, didn't take me very much time at all. Now that's only position that we animated. So by the time you're done with this assignment, that's how quickly you should be doing these things. If I said do 10 page transitions in the next half hour, you would have no problem doing that, okay? Now the only way you get but get to that point is by doing them over and over and over again and understanding those concepts. Now everything that I just did for animating the position of these, animating the graph, easing ease, offsetting stuff, you'll be using those over and over and over again for the rest of the semester. So if you get good at them now, the rest of the semester is going to be so, so much simpler, okay? Now just to show another um, example, if I went to a new page transition, and I'm going to do third. I'm going to call this one scale. Okay. So I'm going to go to my layer, control Y to make a new layer. Now this time, instead of hitting P to bring up position, I'm going to go to scale and bring up the scale. Okay. So now I can animate the scale happening instead of just the position. So I'm going to go to 15 frames because we found that was a good number. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Now to resize this, you anything that's blue, you can click on and type or you can click and drag. So I'm just going to click and drag or type it in does it go to 0? There we go. So I get that. So now I'll do the same exact thing. I'll click on these. I'll go to easy ease. I'll go there. I'll go here. I'm going to squeeze that one in the middle. Let's see if that does anything. Yeah, that's cool. So we get a little bit of slow movement at the beginning, fast in the middle, and then slow at the ends. That's neat. And then again, I'll duplicate it. Again, I will hide that so it doesn't bother me.
Uh, that one's too close. Let's go back to that. There we go. Oh, that's blinding. Oh my god. Hold on. There we go. And then just a little stair step. Too much. There we go. Okay, so very quickly we've created a brand new one using the same exact technique. Now we're using scale though as opposed to position. The same stuff. Okay, so this technique can be used for a multitude of things. It's not just like I can only animate position doing that. Um, I can animate obviously scale doing this too. Now let's talk real quick I'm gonna make another new comp, fourth uh, page transition um, scale off. Okay, so I'm gonna make a solid. When I scaled this, you'll see that it came from the center, right? So as I scale it in and out, it goes right from the center. So what do you think is causing it to go right from the center? The position, but that anchor point thing, right? This little indicator in the middle, so if I move that indicator somewhere else, it'll actually scale from that position, okay, or from that point. So let's say I wanted it to scale from the bottom, I could do that too. Or let's say I wanted it to scale from a corner and open up, I could do that too. So on our hotkey sheet here, there's another one that's called the pan behind tool, um, also anchor point if you look at the top. And the hotkey is, because I want to know. <laughs> So we hold or we hit Y to get to the pan behind anchor point tool, and then I can click and drag and move this wherever. And if I hold Shift or uh, Control, it'll actually lock it to certain points. Okay, so I can lock it to that corner, and then as I do my animation, I could have this scale from that corner. Okay, um, or what I can do here's another neat thing is I can break this constraint. So you've seen this before in other software packages. These two numbers are locked together, so when I change one, it changes both. If I unlink that and I use this, I can change how this thing animates. So just to show you a little bit more advanced one, and we'll do this one a little bit, um, set that to 10. Uh, we'll do this one again next class. I'm gonna go up to here. I'm gonna set this to 100 up to there. So now I have this animation. It goes, right? And then I can easy ease this. I can go into here, make sure I'm on the, what? Oh, I have two values here, so I get two colors. So I have speed graphs roll. That's why I have that. Um, now let's try this. We'll go slower here. And this is a little bit trickier to work with because I'm seeing both graphs, and as I start moving these, I'm moving one that doesn't have any stuff on it. So we'll just try that and see if that looks good. That's cool. Okay. And then again, we can duplicate, and then again, we can change colors. Again, we can switch back to our arrow tool and then move these over. We can't move these layers with the pan behind tool because it'll actually not work correctly. So now, cool. And then we throw some motion blur on, we click that. Awesome. Okay, so this is gonna be the, the uh, rest of class today is I want you to experiment. I want you to work with different uh, ways that you could animate stuff coming into the screen. You can do these together too, like I could do position and rotation and scale if I wanted to go crazy. I'll show more of those next class. Um, but for today, I want you just to work through. Do as many as you can in the time we have left, okay? Um, so do some for position, do some for scale. Even if it's just going out from the center or even if it's just repeating the same one over and over again, just to get used to these. These are the practice ones. These are not the assignment ones. We'll do the assignment ones um, next week. We'll start those. Okay. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, 